Hello electronics people, and welcome to my lab. Today I wanted to demonstrate the latest analog computer that I've put together. It is a discrete time spectrum analyzer with 10 bins. I've implemented this prototype with a fixed one octave bin spacing, although in the future I'm going to make that a variable control. The center frequency is already a variable control. The analyzer is giving me about a 67 dB dynamic range in instantaneous mode, where what's shown on the screen is the result of a single sample calculation. The clock in this device is currently running at about 200 kilohertz, just for some ballpark reference there. That's pretty slow for this device, but uh, everything's working nice and clean down here. There's no complicated crosstalk issues to worry about, so we're going to leave it here for the sake of the demo. In practical spectrum analyzer use, you would implement some averaging, which makes the calculation when it's shown on the screen, the result of many, many samples of data, hundreds or thousands in the low end, and at least many tens in the high end. This drives the dynamic range up toward and beyond 16 bits, again, especially in the low frequencies. So that's pretty good for an analyzer like this. You might be saying, well, that's not very much dynamic range compared to something like the human ear. Well, that's true, but it's a huge dynamic range compared to something like modern music. So anyways, for most practical applications, it's pretty good. This analyzer is running on a 9 volt battery and it consumes relatively small power. On a fresh battery, I left it on overnight by accident and came back to find that the battery was at about 8.8 .8 volts or so and the analyzer was running just fine. So I'll have to measure the current draw, but a 9 volt battery is just fine for this project. This circuit scales easily in the number of bins you can have, what frequencies you can look at, and the overall form factor of the device. I built this prototype fairly large with lots of test points, extra stuff on there, just because it's a relatively new circuit to me, lots of foreign concepts and strange things going on, so I thought, just make it easy for myself at every turn. I recommend you do this in uh, any significantly complex prototyping you're planning on doing. But anyways, that's a topic for another video. This circuit is an all-original design inspired by the concept of the Bucket Brigade. If you already know about how Bucket Brigades work and what they are, I suggest you check out this really cool paper by Weckler. It comes out of 1977. You should be able to find it with just a quick Google search. So anyways, without any further ado, I'm going to show you the analyzer. So here you can see some clocking noise separating the 10 bins and some of the bins are dancing up and down a little bit with some EMI that's coming off of the smartphone I'm using as a source. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on some music. Oops, let's see. There we go. We can watch the bins dance around. Once again, this is in instantaneous mode, giving us that 67 dB of dynamic range. I should note that this is not in the log domain. These are linear signals being displayed. The instantaneous power. I'm going to go ahead and show you what it looks like with a little bit of averaging put on the circuit. <clears throat> so I'll have to move an alligator clip, so bear with me there. So now we're looking at the results of thousands of calculations performed by the processor averaged together. Once again, all these calculations are done in the analog domain. It's a through and through analog device, just with some digital timing signals. So I'm going to go ahead and show you the build, even though it's pretty messy. There's actually a pretty significant routing mistake that I made that forced me to use multiple PCBs in place of just one with different chunks of circuitry alligator clipped together. So with that warning I'll show you the little prototype. Sorry for the messy desk, I got some vacuum tube projects on the go right now as well. But you can see things are sort of just fly wired around, alligator clips, some pots hanging off the side. That's really all there is to it. Pretty simple device, pretty small already. So I'm going to go ahead and switch back to instantaneous mode here. 
we can look a little bit more at the details of how this thing works. Just skip to a more exciting point in the song. So you might be able to see that there's basically no energy in the low frequencies. The bins themselves are a fraction of a hertz at the very low end and a couple hertz beyond that and uh, really no energy is put out at those frequencies by my phone. As you can see there's maybe a little bit of bleed from the adjacent bins. There's really nothing going on there. That's adjustable on a control so you could shift and window what frequencies you actually care to look at. So yes, things pretty slick, looks good to me. Uh, it comes across a little jerky over the video, but the display is actually pretty smooth and uh, relaxing to look at in person. So uh, I'm pretty happy with it. I think I'm going to implement a peak detect function, but beyond that there's really nothing more to be designed except to uh, push the frequencies a little higher. So with that, I'll leave you. Thanks for watching. If you liked the content, go ahead and check out the other videos I've made, and there's going to be lots more like this to come in the near future. Okay, goodbye.